Combat Insiders once again. Joshua Furs here, Nick Portella, as always, over there on the opposite side. Uh, we got a very special treat. Uh, the number one uh, most fights ever, uh, Travis Iron Man Fulton. What's going on, man? Hey, what's up, guys? I guess the first question I kind of want to ask you is, and uh, forgive me for this, but I have to ask, is it's kind of cliche. How did you get started, man? How did you get started? When did you get started uh, into this this whole game of punching people in the face for a living? Uh, I mean, I watched. Uh, I mean, I watched Kumite Bloodsport oh. that movie, so I got obsessed with that and actually thought that tournament really existed. Now remember, it's full contact. There are three ways to win. One, you knock the guy out. Two, your opponent quits and shouts Mete. It's like saying uncle. Three. And then uh, I watched UFC 3 and I just became obsessed with it after that and was doing tough man competitions, just trying to find any way to get into the UFC. And uh, I mean, they had like clubs you could join, like the UFC club, and I don't even know. And uh, I got hooked up with Monty Cox, and it just, Monty Cox was a big promoter back in the 90s and kind of just took off from there. It's kind of wild because. Like you said, the mid-90s you started, and I did the math, and correct me if I'm wrong, but long span of time that you literally fought every six days on an average. Does that sound accurate to you? I mean, I'm pretty good at math, but... Well, what, what probably happened, I mean, I was in Iowa, which was uh, like the hotbed for this stuff back in the 90s, and uh, almost every event was a tournament. Mm. So... And, and I'd usually make the finals, if I, and I'd either win or, or lose in the finals. So I was fighting three times in the night. And uh, I mean, I think the most fights I had in one week was I, I did have five. I fought on a Tuesday, um, and then I had, uh, it was Tuesday, and then I had two fights Friday and two fights on Saturday. And they were, they were big name fights. I mean, I beat uh, Kerry Shaw, Meat Truck Shaw. On a Tuesday, and I beat Christoph Madu. Uh, they're both UFC fighters. I beat those guys both in that those five fights in that week. So, when like I just beat up five uh, rummies from the bar. So, I, I actually saw one because there's a ton of fight clips, and like you said, you start digging and looking, and I can't remember who it was you fought. It was this crazy like you slammed this guy, and he was just out of there. It was the oh, see he knows what I'm talking about. It was the wildest thing to see. Well, there's, there's a huge story behind that fight too. It's like not even like just the fight itself like was interesting enough, but even the backstory behind it like is uh, is a huge story. Uh, I was uh, in Brazil like two days before that, and I, I won eight man tournament in Brazil, and initially I was supposed to uh, get. Onto my plane, fly back to Iowa. I'd be in Iowa one day, and then I was going to go to Utah and fight in tournament. Mm. And uh, I managed to do that. You know, I mean, I, I never got hurt ever. So, uh, and I always showed up, so they they weren't worried about me fighting before. And uh, we end up taking a cab through the backwoods of like Brazil, which is the roads are awesome. And it took like uh, I mean hours all night. Our cab driver like fell asleep at the wheel. Or we almost died. I don't even know. And uh, because I won the eight man tournament, and then we were we missed our flight, and we stayed in uh, Brazil for an extra day. And they got me a flight back to uh, on the days of the fight. They had me fly back to. I got to Miami. And this is before nine eleven, so you can kind of do whatever you wanted in an airport. Yeah. So I was like, hey, let's just go to uh, Utah. Can you fly me there? And I'm like, yeah. And they flew me to Utah and. Uh, I got there at 5 o'clock. I was supposed to be in the tournament. And if you watch that fight, I say I'm fighting in the tournament. And, uh, I mean, they didn't do any weigh-ins then. This wasn't, like, super official stuff back in those days. There weren't even athletic commissions. And uh, so, like, uh, I I ended up going out to eat with a, a reporter. And I'm after the interview and everything and just relaxing. And then uh, when I got to the venue at, like, 7 o'clock, one of the fighters who was on the other side of my bracket started complaining he wanted to see me weigh in. It was a 200 pounds and under tournament. I weighed 202. And so they're like, well, I guess you got to go cut weight. And I'm like, whatever. And I ran around a little bit, and I cut like half a pound. I'm like, well, fuck it. And I'm hurt anyways. My knee was hurt. And I'm like, I don't care. I won't fight then. So they stuck a 
another guy in the tournament, and uh, I went to the little taekwondo guy. I didn't weigh one seventies, but I weighed two hundred pounds, so I looked a lot bigger than him. And he was doing that John Claude Van Damme splits on two chairs in the locker room. Now, I'm not even shitting you. And uh, they were like, um, "Do you want to fight this guy?" And he's like, "Oh, my style teaches me to fight anybody any size. I'll fight anybody." And we're all laughing, we're like, all right. And, uh, Monty was born, he's like, don't kill this guy, Travis. I'm like, whatever. And uh, there were literally like 10,000 people there. I'm not even kidding. It was where the Utah Jazz plane was sold out. Mm. And uh, so, I mean, if you watch, I don't punch him. And uh, so, like, I'm like, well, this is stupid. I'm like, I'll slam him, the crowd will, like, cheer, and I'll put him in an arm bar. And the fucking idiot held on to me. And so he landed on his head and it broke his neck, so. It was um, wild. It was wild to watch. Like he was, it was a done deal. But that's what happens. I, I guess, like you know, every style has their weakness, or you just can't beat everybody. But hey, you 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 chalked up another win, so you you showed well, up. Well, I mean, those, those were the days when guys really were. I mean, he was a taekwondo guy. He did taekwondo, and uh, yep. he was a high ranking black belt in taekwondo, and that really was a day a time when that is all those guys did. You know. Before it became mixed martial arts, when everybody cross trained, they trained their one martial art and went from there. Uh, that yeah, that kind of leads into my next question. You know, like you said, back in the day, everybody was specialists, right? Those are the days of the specialists. You had your wrestlers, you had your boxers, you had your taekwondo, and so you know, so on and so forth. Everybody's specialty, and now it's more like everybody is kind of a jack of all trades kind of thing. I guess from your point of view, I'd love to hear your point of view, like. How have you seen it change and morph? Like, just I guess the sport of, I guess combat sports in general, because you do more than just MMA, you do a little bit of everything. So, I guess, how has combat sports in general really morphed, you know, from when you started, uh, you know, until how it is, you know, now? Well, everything, uh, the events back then in those days, uh, the rules were made up by the event. So, I mean, I went to one event, it'd be bare knuckle. Another event would have no time limit. Another event would have like one 20 minute round. Another event would have like three three minute rounds. So there was no unified rules. And uh, one event you could stomp on a guy. Another event you couldn't punch him with a closed fist on the ground. Uh, they would switch up the rules per event. So, uh, yeah, I mean, now the way it is, I mean, everything is unified. So um, you don't have to worry. I mean, even the first time I fought in the UFC, and UFC 20 at the time limit was uh, it was one 10 minute round and a three minute overtime. Mm. And the second UFC that I fought in, which was UFC 21, it was two five minute rounds. That's it. So I mean, it varied that much per event. That's kind of wild. And another fact, like I, I like the numbers thing. There's a section that says you had a slow year, uh, 2009. You fought uh, more times in 2009. It's a, I had I had it counted at seven. Then a lot of guys fight over a three year span. That was your slow year. Seven well, my fight. slow year is now. I mean, like I'll have one or two or three a year, but I, uh, I mean, I'm old now. You know, I mean, I, I I'd still like to at least have one a year. I uh, I've never like officially retired. That's what's so funny is uh, I've had people for like ten years saying, "I thought you retired." It's like, when the fuck did I say I retired? I've, I've teased with it, but, like, uh, um, you know, I mean, I, it gives me something to do. I'm only 41. Uh, right. you know, all these other guys, 43, 45, 48. So, I mean, as long as my body's still capable, I might as well be able to do it. And I'm not retarded, so I've had plenty of tests to prove that. What do you What do you attribute your, like, you would think after that many fights, there were, you don't, you're not damaged. What is it about you? Like, I watched a bunch of your fights. You don't take a lot of damage. I noticed. But you're you're over, you're almost 400 fights. There's got to be something special about you or the way you train. What do you think it is? The Homer Simpson syndrome? If you uh, watch that, that's funny. The Homer Simpson syndrome. The what? <laughs> oh, you... yeah. Well, did you watch that episode? That was funny. If not, then, like, the joke makes no sense. <laughs> Yeah, but what I'm, what I'm going to do is YouTube it when we're done here. <laughs> no, uh, I, what it is is uh, um, I won't spar hard ever. Uh, that's what I would tell these guys is, uh, you know, you see all those boxers uh, that are punch drunk. 
It's because these guys go to the gym and they spar six days a week, like hard. Uh, they wear that headgear. That doesn't protect your brain. That protects you from getting cut. So uh, they go into there and they train like that and they're punch drunk. And it's like, because, uh, um, you know, all the fights they have. It's like, fuck no, it's because that guy fucking went to the gym and had six fights a week. You know, uh, I mean, that's why. So, I mean, I, I don't like to, I like to move. I like to go in there and spar light and know I'm getting hit and everything, but I don't, I don't like to spar. And uh, so, I mean, if you're going to punch me in the face, I want to get paid for it. So let's fast forward a little bit, Travis. So obviously we got April 4th uh, coming up M1 Global. You and Shannon Rich, who is the number two most uh, ranked uh, most fights how did this whole thing come about and you know how were you approached and when did you know uh, about the fight uh shannon i think decided to get fat and be a heavyweight that's that's what happened but uh, I, I don't know he he messaged me and uh he was like uh you know i think i'm gonna have my last fight and he's like uh and it is weird you know like i did something with the Oh, the top ten I fought, uh, there's nine other guys, I fought six of them. Mm. And uh, so, like, Shannon's like, why, you want to fight? And I was like, whatever, I don't care. So that, that's pretty much exactly how it happened. Uh, I mean, I've known Shannon for years. Uh, I mean, he, you know, he's, uh, if it goes past the first round, I win. <laughs> so... I mean, just based on Shannon's track record, but he's uh, he's got a uh, the thing that's uh, dangerous about Shannon is uh, he's he's one of those guys. I mean, you guys remember like Gary Goodrich and uh, uh, who's another one that was. Uh, I mean, I think even uh, Mark Hunt's one of those guys. Yeah. I mean, they're they're higher level guys, but uh, they're a guy that could beat anybody any day and could lose to anybody any day. And that's what's tough about him is uh, I've seen Shannon beat some legit guys, but you know that'll get drowned out in, uh, in you know the, you know average guys that he's lost to. And same way with me, like I, I beat a lot of good fighters, but then I beat a lot of tomato cans. So uh, you got to you got to sift through all that and and find the good names there. You know when you finally decide, you know what. I'm hanging up the gloves, whatever it is, and, you know, you're done. What is it you hope to accomplish? What What do you think your end game is, you know, when everything is all said and done? When you ride off into the sunset? Uh, I don't know. To be able to walk and talk and not piss myself at the same time? <laughs> That's a good end game. That's a good goal. <laughs> no, I mean, I really, I really never had one. I just... Uh, I remember uh, when I first started fighting, I was obsessed with it, and I used to make a list of the guys I wanted to fight. Right. Like, I, mean, I want to fight everybody. I mean, they just like the sport. I'm not some violent dickhead that wants to go around and punch people. So. Is there any kind of, like, I guess, like Nick said, you're close to that 400 number. Is that is that like a milestone to you? Is it, does it not really, you know, do you not really think about, oh, man, I need to make sure I get to 400. That's a good round number, or you know, uh -huh. I don't know. Is there like a legacy thing? Is there like what motivates you? I guess to you know keep fighting. Well, I uh, I don't know. I don't really have any. There is it motivates me to train. Uh, my last win was my 250th uh, win. Like I mean, because they have my record wrong. They count like uh, like the slap matches. I don't count those. Like I don't count those on my record because you couldn't close fist a guy. You could only open and palm them. And uh, then they had a lot of other ones where you can open and palm, but then you couldn't punch them on the ground. You couldn't do anything on the ground. I was like, that's not MMA. That's just stupid. So I don't count those even on my record. So uh, um, my last win last summer was my 250th win. And I didn't even realize it So until I actually wrote it down in my little record book. So, I mean, I don't really have uh, an end game there either. I mean, I just... Uh, I want to get 100 professional boxing matches. I think I'm at uh, 70. I think I'm at 70. So, uh, and I suck at boxing. But, I mean, at least get to 100 so I can say I'm there. But that's about all. You prefer one or the other? Other, You know, boxing, MMA, is there a preference? Well, MMA, I'm, I'm better. <laughs> I mean, but uh, boxing, what sucks is if a guy can beat you at boxing, you have no choice but to get punched. 
Mm. So what I usually do is uh, um, I like to, the guys that I'm fighting, I like to throw them around a little bit and let them know that, uh, fuck you, if this was a real fight, I'd, I'd win. Mm. And uh, so, I mean, it's ended up getting me disqualified, I think, seven times. But uh, disqualification is not a knockout loss. So we're cool. Plan, get disqualified. Man, we just, uh, just absolute in awe of how many fights you've had. And uh, you're just, you are the Iron Man. I mean, your your name yeah. is fitting to your resume. I mean, it's just absolutely yeah, yeah. fitting. So, um, man, I tell you what, that's uh, that's kind of all we got for this. But uh, for Nick Portello, for Josh Furs, that's the Iron Man, Travis Fulton. Stay tuned. April fourth, uh, he's fighting Shannon the Cannon Rich M One Global. Uh, it's gonna be on UFC Fight Pass. Do not miss it. Number one and number two. It's going to be awesome, man. That's all we got. We're Combat Insiders, and we're out.